the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God. Amen. Hello and welcome. In our previous episode, we looked at how the Holy Body was distributed and how you prepare yourselves in proceeding to partaking of the Holy Communion. Today's episode, we will look at how the precious blood is distributed and how the altar utensils are washed and the two silent prayers which Abuna prays before dismissing the angel of sacrifice, which are the prayer of thanksgiving to God and the prayer of submission to the Father. First of all, the distribution of the precious blood. If there is no assistant priest and Abuna has celebrated the whole liturgy on his own, then he will have to now distribute the precious blood as follows. As explained previously, Abuna uncovers the chalice and places the veil on the left uh, side of the throne. Then he holds the chalice with his right hand, holding the mastir or spoon between the third and fourth fingers, and lifts the chalice while the deacon opens the doors of the throne. Then the priest holds the chalice in his left hand with its veil. After signing the people with the blood, like this, he partakes of the spaddy corn, followed by two, tablespo- two spoons of the precious blood. The celibate priest then distributes the blood to the deacons, the men and the women, in the same order. When your turn comes to receive the honored blood, proceed towards the chalice carefully, so the priest may give you the sacred blood, and feel and believe that you are approaching the blood from the divine side of Jesus Christ, who was crucified, and drink of the blood from the side of the Lord when he was wounded by the spear. When Abuna says, the blood of Emmanuel, our God, this is so in true Amen, respond saying, Amen. But do not place the veil or the napkin over your mouth after receiving the blood, as it might be absorbed in the cloth. You must then drink some water so that none of the Holy Communion remains in your mouth. Then stand in a quiet place offering prayers of thanksgiving to God who allowed you to receive this holy body and blood and gave you this spiritual gift. Pray quietly the following prayer, the prayer of the Holy Communion, which is found in the back of the Agbeya prayer book, starting, My tongue praises and my soul glorifies the Lord. My heart rejoices, for you have come to me, Lord. After completing the thanksgiving prayers, go back to your usual place in the church and sing with the congregation the praises and hymns said during the Holy Communion time. After the Holy Communion has been given and the angel of sacrifice has been dismissed, pray with the congregation the final blessing prayers. After everyone has partaken of the blood, Abuna returns to the altar, drinks whatever is remaining of the blood from the chalice without using the mastir. He does this with great care so that none of the blood rolls over the handle or the mastir inside the chalice when he tilts the the chalice. If much blood remains, he should either distribute more of it to the assistant priest or priests uh, and deacons, or he may drink it gradually so that he does not uh, choke or cough. Note, the celibate priest must receive the holy body and blood before any of the priests, deacons or congregation. Even if there is an older or uh, priest of higher rank, for the serving priest is the minister of the sacraments. Our Lord first consecrated his body, broke it uh, and ate of it first. Then he gave it to his disciples. He did the same with the blood. Note that the entire sacraments must be consumed, nothing remaining for a later time or day, as in accordance with the regulations of the Passover lamb. 
you shall let none of it remain until morning. This does not apply to the part of the sacraments which the priest keeps in the gems box to take immediately after the Mass to a sick person. In this case, the deacon, without drinking water after the Holy Communion, goes with a boner to the sick person when the Mass is over to give him the Holy Sacrament. Abuna then washes the gems box thoroughly and gives some of the water to the sick person to drink before drinking the rest of it himself. Why does the church distribute the Holy Communion separately, first the body and then the blood? The following two reasons. The Lord Christ himself gave it to his disciples in the same way when he instituted the mystery of the Eucharist. Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat of this, you all, this is my body. Also, the church wants us to never forget Christ's blood, which gushed out of his divine side on the cross and was shed on the ground for our salvation. The church collects it in a chalice separate from the body because the blood which flowed from his side, streamed, and still streams for our salvation. By partaking of the Holy Communion, we unite ourselves with Jesus. Thus, we receive strength from him, and we know that his strength is made perfect through weakness. When we receive the divine mysteries, we carry Christ inside of us. We can overcome the world through this, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. The church does the correct thing in chanting the joyous hymns during the distribution of the sacraments as the people of the church stand in awe during such blessed moments, meditating on the sacrifice of the cross and the slain Lamb for the sins of the world. They listen, participate in the hymns of the distribution, this has been the church's custom since the apostolic era, and this is evident in the apostolic instructions. Let all believers sing praise until the entire oblation has been communed. Take an example from what happened when Jesus set the Lord's Supper in the upper room of Zion, the Holy Bible says, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. About the necessity of quietness and praying after the Holy Communion, one of the fathers said, After receiving the Holy Mystery, we must not hurry to leave the church or start talking, but let us be alone in silence and pray for a few moments after the Holy Liturgical Prayer to thank God and appreciate His eternal gift. For during these precious moments, we are most able to worship our God and touch the presence of the divine host dwelling inside our souls. So as once spiritually renewed or converted, we leave the church and greet others so that they may know that the unspokable mystery has been fulfilled within us, which is the mystery of love which proclaims much more our love for others. So let's go to the washing of the utensils. And uh, this is done as follows. After giving out the honored blood, the priest starts washing the utensils and the deacon pours the water for the, uh, for the priest. The first thing is he takes the chalice and stirs the mystere or the spoon with the water inside of it, and then lift some of the water using the mystere around the edges in the chalice, like this, to cleanse it, okay, around the edges. Um, so if there's any blood around it, it will go into the water. He then drinks the water from the chalice and repeats this a second time. After the priest places the veil holding the chalice to the left of the chalice, the deacon pours water in the chalice a third time 
as the priest washes the mastir or um, the spoon. He then places the mastir, the spoon, in the paten like this and cleans the edges of the chalice here. With his right index and middle fingers. He then places his right hand over the plate and drinks of the water in the chalice. If there are other priests, he has the deacon fills the chalice with water, places the veil around the chalice and presents it to the priest to drink from. When they are finished, he cleanses the chalice with the water poured from the deacon over the pattern, first around the edges of the chalice where the priest drank from, then at its middle, and then at the base here. He then places the chalice on the towel and cleans the mastier from the top of it to the bottom. Okay. With the water above the pattern so it doesn't go out, blesses his eye with it and kisses it while saying, Enlighten my eyes, lest they taste the sleep of death, and lest my enemy should say, I have become more powerful than him. Then he places the spoon inside the chalice. If the associate priest has held the chalice and has given blood to the people, he also washes his hands in the paten and drinks the water. The celibate priest then washes the star over the pattern, the edges, the end parts, which are touched by the body. Afterwards, he then cleanses the pattern with his hands in the water, or in the pattern, like so, which was used to clean the other utensils. Then drinks all the water in the pattern. When the deacon places more water in the pattern, the priest offers the pattern to the deacons to drink from. When they have all taken some water, the priest cleans his hands and mouth in the pattern like this. He may also clean the edges of the pattern like this and then drinks the water. Next he puts a little bit of water in the pattern and moves the pattern so that the water makes the sign of the cross inside of it. He drinks the water and places the pattern over his head and says the following prayer of thanksgiving to God inaudibly. Our mouth is filled with gladness and our tongue with joy for partaking from your immortal mysteries, O Lord, that which an eye has not seen nor e heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which you, O God, have prepared for them that love your holy name and have revealed unto the small children of your holy church. As this, O Father, the pleasure before you, for you are merciful, we send up unto you glory and honor, O Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Now, as the Apostle Paul says, I has not seen, nor e heard, not have entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those that love your holy name. Regarding the holy sacraments, just as Jesus, the Lord of glory, said to give thanks to the Father, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. The babes referred to here are the simple and meek believers who straightforwardly and without confusion believe in the mystery of the church. 
Then the priest also says inaudibly the prayer of submission to the father, also with the patent over his head. Your servants, O Lord, who are serving you, in, uh, entreating your holy name and bowing down their heads to you, dwell in them, O Lord. Walk among them, aid them in every good deed, wake their heart from every evil, earthly thought. Grant them to live and think of what is pertaining to the living and understanding of things that are yours. Through your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom we and all your people cry out, saying, Have mercy upon us, O God, our Savior. So in today's episode, we looked at how the precious blood was distributed, how the altar utensils were washed, and the two silent prayers, which Abuna prayers before this meeting the angel of sacrifice. That is, the prayer of thanksgiving to God and the prayer of submission to the Father. Now, next and final episode, we will look at dismissing the angel of sacrifice and dismissing the congregation, the distribution of the ologia, the bread of blessing, and finally, what should we do after partaking of the divine sacraments. God bless, and we'll see you later on.